Is insurance for Christians scriptural? Controversial subject coming up here. Oh boy, you know, you know how we are. We try to stay away from controversy, naming names and things like that. You know, you know. So, um, but we're both going to be in this study, and um, because she has some interesting experiences, and I have some of my own interesting experiences with insurance. But uh, this is a subject that was requested. Um, I did an initial study on this many years ago. Uh, the thing about insurance, um, there are insurance policies just you know for just about anything out there and the question comes up as a Christian what does the Bible have to say about insurance now we are King James Bible believers and we you know usually will try to define words in Scripture but the word insurance is not in Scripture as far as this modern-day thing of uh, insurance but the word surety is we're gonna be looking at that here in this study but the the main thing with insurance is that it's a system whereby you have fear and you are paying money to alleviate the fear. I'm going to show you what this stems from. Turn your Bible to Mark chapter 12 and verse 30. This is going to be a kind of a strong rebuke to some people and uh, I just pray that you'll take this thing in a spirit of uh, humility and that you will consider the arguments raised herein. Proverbs 18, 13. Do not answer the matter before you hear it. If you do, it's a shame to you, not to us. Consider the scriptures and uh, make your decision after that. Mark chapter 12, verse 30 says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. All right. Uh, do you love God with everything you know, about you? Do you love God completely, 100%? You say, well, yes. Do you have insurance? Because I'm going to tell you right now, if you have insurance, and we're going to talk about the different types of insurance, uh, there are, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but if you have many of the types of insurance out there, and I'm going to talk about, and we're going to define this, um, so don't get ahead of me, but if you have insurance, you don't truly love God with all your heart, mind, you know, uh, soul, strength. You don't truly love Him. Let me show you why I say that. Turn your Bible to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. Verse 18 through 19. The Bible says, Remember what we read there in Mark chapter 12, verse 30. You're supposed to love the Lord completely. Look at this. Verse 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. All right. God loved you enough to send his son to die on the cross to pay for your sins. Now, after your salvation... Uh, how much do you really love the Lord? You say, well, I, I love the Lord. I love the Lord completely. But what's that have to do with my insurance policies that I have? Why do you have insurance policies? Well, what would I do if my house burned down? Sounds like fear to me. What would I do if I had a, a major accident and I had to have major surgery? What would I do? Again, it's fear. I mean, the God that created the universe, the God that is the source of all life, don't you think he can protect you? Do you really love God? It's really something, isn't it? You say, but, but you know, okay, but there are things that we're supposed to do down here on the earth. And I mean, after all, you know, turn in your Bible there to Philippians chapter 4. I mean, after all, I mean, we, we, we just have to be good, responsible people and things. I mean, it's just we got to do like everybody else, right? <laughs> you know, sure. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. It says here, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus through insurance policies. Oh, wait. Uh, no, I did. I Sorry, that last part there, it wasn't in there. Uh, maybe we should rewrite the Bible and come out with a new one, you know. Yeah, we could do that. Who does that again? Who likes to rewrite the Bible? Oh, I don't know. They're our good Catholic friends, yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> sure. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the point is, God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Again, who controls the wealth of the universe? God does. So, wouldn't you want to rely on him to provide for you? Yeah, absolutely. Let me show you another little verse here. Romans 8, 28. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 says, And we know, know, you know, of a surety. We'll see that here in a little bit. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. We're back to it again. Do you love God? Perfect love casts out fear. Do you see how it all ties together? If you love God, you will say to yourself, you know what, if we lose our house, all things work together for good. If you lose your house in a fire because you don't have uh, homeowner's insurance, fire insurance, as a Christian, you can say, God has something better planned for me. See? And we're going to get into this thing as we continue here. But, you know, let's define the word surety here. Uh, Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Surety. And there's four different, there's a bunch of different definitions, but we picked definition number four because it lines up with this study. There's different ways that you can define surety. But listen to this. Definition number four. Security against loss or damage. Security for payment. Now that's modern day insurance. So this word surety is in the Bible, in the King James Bible. We're going to see about this thing here as we continue. Turn in your first, what's the law of first mention here? Genesis chapter 15. Genesis 15. I'm sure there are fingers typing comments out. Well, what about this? What about that? Watch the video. Okay. Or people screaming about this whole topic. Yeah. Yep. Watch the whole video first, please. Genesis chapter 15, verse 13 through 15. This is the first time it shows up in your King James Bible. It says, And he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, oh, let's continue reading here. Verse 15. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. You say, well, that's, that's not really talking about an insurance policy. Well, it's actually talking about true insurance that comes from God. Actually, uh, assurance. Not so much insurance, but assurance that God's going to take care of things. A surety that God will take care of your life. Like the old hymn, Blessed Assurance? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Assurance? Yeah. And see, notice though, there in verse uh, 13, they shall be a stranger, stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. So God is giving the prophecy to Abraham saying, hey, your children are actually going to be bond servants in Egypt. That's what happened there for 400 years. But afterwards, they're brought out with great substance. You might go through some bad things here in this life. You might go through some health challenges and whatever else. And we're going to talk more about why that happens a lot of times. But you might go through some bad things. You might lose your home. You might lose a vehicle. I mean, you know, if you've seen uh, one of our videos from this past summer, I had an old uh, 1985 Honda big red three-wheeler in really nice condition. It was a beautiful three-wheeler, great condition, and the thing burnt to the ground. I mean, literally just burned up. You know, it had this stupid ethanol gas. You know, I didn't even know it, but it, it basically eats away at old rubber gaskets especially. And if they're sitting outside under tarps, it just accelerates the process. And it leaked gas, and I was back in the woods. I could not react in time. And the thing they lit on fire, and I jumped off, and it was like trying to grab water to throw on the thing. I couldn't get it in time. Totally burned up. Totally burned up. Couldn't do a thing about it. 
And I was very depressed about that. I was just like, it got me down. But you know what? I was like, you know, the Lord had a, had a reason for this and he's going to provide, you know, and the Lord has provided a replacement for it. Praise the Lord, a lot better replacement for it. Not thing brand new, so don't get excited, but you know, something a little newer than 1985. But the point is, God replaced it with something better. I didn't call up my insurance agent and say, hey, I just lost my three-wheeler. I need to cash in on my policy. There wasn't any policy. There wasn't any, any insurance on the thing. And what happened? God provided something better. Yeah. Speaking of that, of not calling the insurance agent, didn't we hear about a story at the store, at the thrift store, mm -hmm. several days ago? A, yeah. a woman here in the county uh, had a fire yeah, Somewhere. this it was, it's interesting because I've been wanting to do this study for a while. And a lot of times the Lord will kind of say, you know, hold off. Don't get that study done because I'm going to be showing you some more evidence. <laughs> and uh, we're at the Salvation Army store down in Holton and uh, one of the towns here in this area. And we're in there and this one woman that's working there, uh, she was saying about how she was, her and her husband were like watching an idiot box or something like that and they heard this noise and they're like what, what's that noise and here they go out and their place is on fire and they had a lot of damage they were able to get the fire department there or whatever and but a lot of they lost a lot of things and the ironic part was she said that when the police arrived they said do you have insurance and she said no no homeowners insurance no fire insurance no nothing what they lost was a complete loss. You know what the police officer said? He said, well, he said, there's some good and bad news. He said, the bad news is that you lost everything. You're going to have to replace it out of pocket. But he said, the good news is we don't have to do an investigation, which could draw out. And, and if, you know, we have to investigate it because if you're, if your house catches on fire, they have to come in. If you have an insurance policy, you have to get a police report saying, did you or did you not burn the place down yourself trying to get the insurance money? They have to come in. They have to get, you know, the insurance company have to deal with them. And, I mean, there are stories after stories where we know of, and we're going to be sharing some of them, where you deal with an insurance company, it's like going to court. I mean, you're going through nightmares trying to get money out of these people that you're paying your premium for, you know. And it's just, it's a terrible thing. And this police officer actually said... In some ways, you're better off because you can start rebuilding right away. There's no investigation. There's no stupid insurance nonsense to go through. Secular people. Isn't that something? You know, and you say, well, do you have fire insurance on this place? No, we don't. I don't have, you know, insurance policies. We're going to be talking about this thing of vehicle insurance. Um, you know, vehicle insurance is a situation where you know, I'll just define this here because vehicle insurance is the only type of insurance I would say I would agree with, but there's a little catch to that whole thing. First of all, we're dealing not with just our, you know, home or whatever here. When you are out on, on the roads, you're dealing with other people that can lose control and hit you or whatever else. Okay, you are forced to have vehicle insurance. If I wasn't forced to, I probably wouldn't. But let me ask you the question. What type of vehicle do, insurance do you have? Do you have full coverage or liability? Liability only covers the other guy. See? All of the vehicles, we have, you know, two vehicles essentially, but, you know, the vehicles that we have, we only have the, the very, very least that you can get here in the state of Maine. You know? Don't have full coverage. See, full coverage is if I'm in an accident, it pays for the other guy, and it pays for me as well. See? Again, you're not trusting the Lord in that situation. All right? And you say, what about health insurance? We're supposed to have health insurance. That's a law passed against it. Yes, and it's an unconstitutional, satanic law. And I will not submit myself to health insurance. And All if right? you have a state marriage license, you are prime victim candidate for the required mandated health insurance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you're, again, you're going to the, to the state to get a license to exist. And again, you know, I, I feel like, you know, we don't really talk a whole lot about this thing of state marriage licenses, um, you know, as far as what to do and, and everything. And the reason is because it's mostly just common sense, brethren. 
A lot of stuff that you do as a Christian is just common sense. I mean, you get up in the morning to read the Bible. You don't say, oh, oh wait, we got we to gotta contact the government. Did you call the government yet? You don't do that. You just read the Bible. You don't contact the government to pray. You just pray. And so it is with getting married. You have witnesses there. You know, I think it's a good idea to have both fathers, but that might not always work. You know, the father of the bride, the father of the groom coming together. I think that that's good, but that might not always work. Maybe you'll just have some Christian witnesses there to witness the union of husband and wife. But you get married, write it down in the front of your Bible there, a marriage coverture between husband and wife, you're done. You don't need to go down to the courthouse and get any official papers. And, you know, if you have a state marriage license, I would suggest you really seriously study this issue. And I know Michael Pearl, Debbie and Michael Pearl, um, they, you know, he, it was kind of a funny story. He said he came home the one time and he's like, comes into his wife and he goes, I want to get a divorce. And she's like, what? <laughs> Cause he's a pastor and he's a good guy. And, and, you know, they're both saved and, and she's like, huh? And he's like, we have a state marriage license. I want to disannul our state marriage license and then get a biblical marriage where the state no longer controls. As long as you don't no. show the state government or any form of government your marriage coverture in your Bible. Yeah, don't go and say, you know, we want to be officially, we want to make this official here. You know, you don't need to do that. You know, just be married, you know, under the Lord's headship, right? Very important. And it's going to become more important as time goes by. Because again, if we go to the government and say, do we have your permission to read the Bible this morning? Can you give us a license for that? Guess what they can do with that license? They can revoke it. They have control now because we've given, they've given us, excuse me, permission to read the Bible. If you have a state marriage license, you have given them, or they, excuse me, they have given you permission to be married. And it's then not, they all coming from the Lord. Right. And they ultimately control every single technical detail of your life. Mm -hmm. Your children, where your children go to school, how much money you can profit off of ma making and bearing children, and the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. So if you think, I don't want the government controlling my life, get rid of your state marriage license immediately. Mm -hmm. You have no right to complain if you have one. Yeah. And see, you know, it's that's why this stuff is important. You know, if you're going to do things, you have to do it completely. You can't just say, well... You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with this, and I'll you know I'll keep my state marriage license, and I'll keep this, and I'll keep that. You know, you got to get away from this. And and again, there's nothing illegal about this. It's not you know we've never had any any law enforcement come here and say well, you're not properly married. They can't do anything about it. All right. I mean, there are so many people. I mean, that live together. I mean, if they came and came after us because we're not state marriage licensed together, you know. They'd have to come after all the people that live together, too. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. You know, when you show the Lord, hey, we are serious about loving you completely and following you and submitting to you completely, God will be a surety for you. And protect he will take you. you. Yes, he will take care of you. Absolutely. That's why it's important for us to mention this, because if you just simply say, no health insurance, but you're yoked up to the state through licenses and all kinds of things like that, you're, you're not going to make it. Okay, that's why you got to you got to pull out of that system and say, okay, I'm going to do things God's way to get God's protection. It's like that, you know, you see a lot of times you'll see these lost people in the conspiracy truther movement and they'll try to go after the government for government corruption and they end up getting themselves killed. Why? They don't have the backing of the Lord. And they're lost you know, going Satan against Satan. Right. It's, it's just not going to work. If you don't have if you're not doing things God's way, you can't expect to have God's protection with this whole thing. You know, it's just that simple. And you say, well, then I'll just stay in the system. Well, then you're going to suffer, you know. Then it's going to hinder the gospel because you don't, if you stay in the system, every single time you say, I'm a King James Bible believing Christian. And people are like, uh, even if a lost person comes up to you and says, uh, I thought the Bible says such and such. And yet you're doing what you claim you supposedly believe in not doing even if the lost person approaches you and doesn't flat out confront you about your uh, so-called staying in the system while professing to be saved they're going to think to themselves i don't want what they're a part of yeah, they, they got religion gonna, they're, they're, they're the same thing as i am exactly they're not going to see any difference and that's why it's important to get into this stuff and you know brethren again 
you know, back in the uh, good old days of America, you could you could live basically like a lost person and kind of just go along to get along. Uh, that system's coming to an end. Okay, they're getting more and more and more control. And I'm going to tell you this. You know why we have forced health care here in America? Because Christians, professing Christians many times, but Christians for too long have gotten health insurance. And don't see a problem that's, with having it. That's why. Because that's of respectability why, and recognition. Yeah. That's why the system came in. Okay? And, you know, and, and you know, oh, you're being sarcastic. Yes, we're being sarcastic. Okay, the, the, the system is very, very corrupt and, you know, oh, well, you know, the Lord's just going to rapture us away and things like that. Yes, he will rapture you away, but don't just say, well, I'm just going to let everything fall apart down here and I'm just going to live just totally wicked and then the Lord's just going to pull me out of the thing. You have a responsibility to come out of sin and wickedness and things like that and come out of the system. All right. Going to get a... I don't, I'm kind of getting ahead of ourselves here, but, you know, this stuff is very important. Genesis chapter 18, and you're not going to make too many friends when you start talking about this stuff. I mean, good night. People are so sold out on this whole system. Professing Christians are just going to fight this and fight this. Well, what about this? Well, what if this happens? And what about, I can't, uh, you know why? They don't love the Lord completely. That's the only reason. That's the only reason. I mean, God can't take care of you. I mean, keep going back to this thing. God can't take care of you? I mean, come on now. Genesis chapter 18. Go to there next. Starting in verse 9. You know, one of the big things for, uh, uh, you know, well, we have to have health insurance is, what if we have a child? What are we going to do if we have a child? And let me ask you a question. That, if if you're serving, if you're truly saved as a King James Bible-believing Christian, and you profess to love the Lord, let me ask you a question. Would a perfect omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent God, like the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, would he not know how to take care of any and every nitpicking worry and concern you have as a King James Bible-believing Christian? Uh, you know, wouldn't a perfect God know how to do that since he created everything, mm -hmm. including you and every single, uh, you know, skin problem you may have on your entire body? If he knows everything about you don't you think he knows how to take care of you without your stupid man-made insurance system mm -hmm. just think about that for a second yeah let's continue here genesis chapter 18 verse 9 and they said unto him where is sarah thy wife and he said behold in the tent and he said i will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life and lo sarah thy wife shall have a son and sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Hmm, there's the word again. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall shall have a son. The Lord's saying, hey, I'm going to take care of it. Now look at this. this. I always like this verse. Verse 15. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laughed not, for she was, what? Afraid? Did Sarah love the Lord completely? No, she had some fear. She was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. Don't think you're going to get by God on this whole issue. Don't think that you're going to be able to just pull the wool over his eyes and say, well, well, well you know, I, I just, I have to. I mean, I don't really have a choice. You know, they, they force it on me at work and they da 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 and stuff. Uh-huh. You would do well to get away from that thing. Uh, next, we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. It says, My son, if thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth, thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Oh boy. You know, there again, you know, I remember back when I was working, before I got saved, uh, the last job I had, 
Um, they, they gave us health insurance and things like this. And it was like at first there was this, it was good health insurance. Then we switched plans and things. And uh, it was like, you know, well, if you're going to sign up for this thing, you know, we're going to need to, you know, we'll give you incentives if you can prove to us that you're losing weight. And, you know, and, and we got to have periodic checkups and everything just to make sure and stuff. What's going on? You sign up for health insurance. You sign up for different types of insurance. You are giving the insurance company rights to control you. All right. You sign up for homeowners insurance. Guess what they want? They want lists of what you have. And the value your, of yeah, every single your item. Your right. high value items. Yeah. Uh, I saw there was a guy on uh, YouTube. He's a gun guy and whatever else. And he has this big collection of military firearms. And he's like, I got an insurance policy on my military firearms collection. And he's like, and what they wanted was a record of all that I have and their worth. And I'm thinking, boy, you're brilliant. You know, Obama's always saying we need to get rid of the guns. We need to get rid of the guns. Here this guy is. He's yoked up to an insurance company and they have pictures. They have, a you know, full collar pictures and value of all the guns the guy has. It's like, think about that one there, buddy. You know, boy, what something could happen. I could lose my guns. You're going to lose your guns because you're yoked up to insurance. Duh. You know, and how many people, oh, you know, something could happen if, if, if I, you know, don't have health insurance, something could happen to me. And you know what I've seen over the years? When you have health insurance, something will happen to you. You know why? Because God says, hey, you're not relying on me. You rely on your health insurance. The Bible talks about the wicked being taken in their own ways. When you become wicked as a Christian and you say, hey, I'm going to have health insurance, I'm going to have homeowner's insurance, I'm going to have all this other stuff. My niece and her husband, just newly married, they're like in their, I think she's like 18 or something like this. But uh, my niece, um, they, had, they had a house fire. And their insurance covered it. You know why they had a house fire? And they're not saved or anything, but you know, the, the point is, I believe they had a house fire because of their insurance policy. I've seen that thing. I've seen it so many times. People that they'll, they'll go out, they'll get insurance, and the Lord just goes, okay, I'm pulling back. You don't want to trust me to keep you safe? Then you just have it, have at it on your own. You say, well, what about you, Brother Brian? Oh, well, the last time I had health insurance was probably 1996, I think. And I had health insurance forced upon me, of course, by my uh, greedy... Uh uh, money-loving, money-hungry parents who uh, decided to use me as their cash cow for all sorts of financial incentives and purposes throughout my lost life uh, until I graduated high school. Um, and I don't know how many colleges I attended as a lost woman, if they, how many forced health insurance on me. But the point is, is uh, no matter how many times I had forced health insurance in my academic years after high school, I just basically you know, said to myself, I convinced myself in my mind, I don't have a health insurance. I don't care what they say. I'm not using it. And if they ask me if I have it, I'm going to flat out say, no, I don't. And I have used that. And you tell, a, you tell a medical clinic flat out, I don't have health insurance. And depending on the place, they'll be like, that's okay. You know, we get lots of people like that. Um, mm -hmm. I 2009, I had a health problem, female health problem at the time. Uh, caused and exacerbated by fluoridated water because uh, living with my family as a lost woman, you know, they don't see a problem with pharmaceutical fluoride. <clears throat> I mean, fluoridated water mm -hmm. created by the Jesuits, of course. And, um, you know, I went to the, the health clinic, one of the many health clinics in Omaha, Nebraska at the time in 2009. And I, and I told the receptionist people at the front desk there at the clinic, I said, flat out, I don't have health insurance because if you're not active duty military and you go to a civilian healthcare provider, you're not automatically covered with health insurance, which for me was actually a blessing in, dis in disguise from the Lord at the time because I didn't want to use health insurance. I saw as a little girl before I graduated high school how it was a scam. You know, even with uh, my parents' Blue Cross Blue Shield policy growing up, they were like, 
um, you know, how are you gonna pay for this? And the insurance company said, well, because it's such and such classification of a health problem or health issue, we're only going to cover a certain percentage. Mm -hmm. And then my parents were like, oh, how are we gonna pay for this out of pocket? Oh, you know. Yeah, that happens all the time. That, that happens all the time. I mean, what you're saying there, I mean, I've, I've known personally of many experiences where people are just like, they go, you know, I got health insurance. I got the best that there is. And then they get some kind of major thing that goes wrong. And the health insurance company goes, whoop, drops them like a hot potato mm -hmm. and just goes, sorry, you're on your own. And I just want to say this. When you go to a medical clinic that actually deals with a lot of uninsured uh, victims of witchcraft, <clears throat> otherwise known as patients, um, they will they will say, well, actually, your bill is only, you know, such and such amount. For me at the time in 2009, it was about $115, $120 total was my total bill out of pocket because I said, no, I don't have health insurance. You know, and they were like, that's fine. You know, here's your bill. I paid it with my debit card at the time, you know, a little over $100. And once my bill was paid, that's it. I walked out no paperwork filed or anything, no, uh, where's your insurance card? You know, we're gonna have to call the insurance company and whatnot. No hassle, just paid for it mm -hmm. right there. I've had numerous injuries. This, my thumb thing I talked about in the other study there on the, when to know if God's speaking to you. This thing, paid for that in cash. I fell the one time when I was logging and I, I landed, bruised my pelvis back there, almost was paralyzed, fell on some rocks backwards with a running chainsaw good times and uh you know and i went to the hospital and it was you know i thought i had internal bleeding or something it was bad but you know paid for it didn't have any insurance now i don't know how they would be right now if there was some kind of an emergency thing again you know and and let me say this both times i had these injuries i was messing around with sin so the lord will use that to you know kind of correct things but uh you know I just believe, you know, I put my faith in the Lord, and we've done this now. We've proved this thing. That you put your faith in the Lord, the Lord will take care of you. He'll keep you away from that whole system. And um, But let's continue here. We'll, we got more stories as we're going to be going along, but I want to just uh, go through the scriptures here. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 15 says, He that is surety for a stranger shall smart for it, and he that hateth surety ship is sure. Sounds kind of confusing, but... Break the verse down. He that is surety for a stranger shall smart for it. Again, an insurance policy when you're dealing with strangers, when you're dealing with with you know companies that you know are they really going to cover me and whatever else and 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 things like that, you're going to smart for it. It's going to hurt you. In other words, you you know you you get hurt your finger or something. You go, boy, that really smarts. That's what the the King James Bible is saying here. You will smart for it. You will hurt. Be hurt by dealing with strangers and things. Again, you know, like this analogy I gave of this guy, you know, giving an insurance company the total list of all the guns that he has in his collection because he wants to keep them safe. And it's like, you don't even know who you're talking to, you know? I mean, there could be somebody in the insurance agency that's working there that, that's also a federal employee of the government, you know? I mean, and then, you know, or speaks to somebody, hey, I'm related to so and so, they're with the ATF or something. I mean, or they could you know, just be a flat-out Jesuit, you yeah, know, with it's, a it's designator, just, SJ. And, and, you know, and, and just to say this, by the way, too, because I know a lot of people are like, oh, you'd think Jesuits are behind everything. Well, you know, there's a lot of people that are being Jesuit educated. Uh, even You don't even have to go to a Jesuit school, okay? The, the Jesuit education is pretty much controlling this country. So, you know, it's a system of snitching on people and whatever else. I mean, it's just like... You're giving your information, your personal information to strangers. And sometimes who, blood tests. Yeah, you know, yeah, with the health insurance thing. You know, you don't know who you're giving this stuff to. You know, man, you're going to smart for it if you do that. But let's look at the other part here. And he that hateth suretyship is sure. If you hate insurance from man, you're sure of what? God protecting you. God is my father. God is our father. He's going to take care of us. You know, we've had people call us crazy and stuff because we don't have insurance on different things. And it's like, you know, I got into an argument with the one the one time and I'm like, God will provide. 
oh, well, he, well, yeah, you know, okay, but well, I guess he could, but it's like, huh? You know, God will provide. God runs the universe, and he can't take care of my vehicle or whatever else. I'll tell you a little story there, you know, if I had had full coverage insurance, we would have been okay. No. Um, my former truck I had, if you've seen the, the one video, I have an older truck now, a 1979 Ford. I, I like to go back when I get new vehicles. I go older vehicles. <laughs> but the, I like old vehicles. Uh, not all the modern technology junk. But I had a 1994 Ford Ranger for a while. You know, Lord was really good to give me a good deal on it. And I had it for many, many years. Uh, that's, if you've seen my uh, bumper stickers video, an older one. It was a purple Ford Ranger, dark purple Ford Ranger. But that thing... I knew it was having brake problems in the back, you know, back the driver's side. And it was just like we didn't have the money and didn't have the time. We only had that as our only vehicle. Uh, for most of the time we've been married, we only had one vehicle. And it was just like I'd pray and we'd pray before we leave and be just like, Lord, please take care of it. We drove that thing for, what, like half a year with bad brakes in the back? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it was like... Never had an accident, never had a problem. You know, we finally got the money to get the thing fixed. And it was like, the guy's like, man, the brakes are totally gone. They're totally shot. You know, it was just amazing. God protected us that whole time. But if I'd had a full coverage, in, you know, if we could have had a full coverage insurance policy, honey, we could have, you know, we could have called and had, you know, it taken care of financially. See, we hate surety ship. Therefore, we are sure that the Lord's going to protect us. I have my little note here. Trusting an insurance salesman is a lot like trying to pet a rattlesnake. A lot of truth to that. Mm -hmm. But uh, Proverbs 17, verse 18. It says here, A man void of understanding striketh hands and becometh surety in the presence of his friend. Oh, well, thank you. I think that it's good to have you in the, as part of our insurance you know, company now. And, uh, and you can rest assured that, that we'll take care of all your needs. You know, what, what's the thing that, was it an Allstate or something that, that has the hands like the symbol or something? Uh, you're There's, in good, well, it might be. I forget You're in good hands one. with somebody. You you're know. in good hands with Allstate. I and think that's what State it is. State Farm is, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Uh, yeah. Sure, like a good neighbor, neighbor, right. But, you know, it just, you know, when you are void of understanding... You know, you're going to become shorty in the presence of a friend. You know, in other words, you're going to put your neck out on the line saying, okay, you know, I'm going to keep paying money into this system and in hopes that they're going to take care of me. Uh, you're void of understanding if you think that. Um, again, what we were talking about, you know, another little story here. Um, uh, a family that went to the Babel building I was raised in, um, Fishers, they were called, and uh, the father was Abe. I don't remember the mother's uh, name, but they had a son. And he, I think it was like spinal meningitis or some kind of major thing. And they had insurance, you know, and it was like major things and all the surgery and everything else. And it went for a while. And all of a sudden it was just like the insurance company went boom and dropped them. And all of a sudden they have like millions of dollars of debt. What are we going to do? I mean, their lives are ruined. And there are many, many people that have gone through that, that exact thing where they are counting on their insurance. You know, my insurance policy will protect me. And it doesn't. You know, and the people say, you know, again, like we talked about earlier, what do you do if you're a married couple and you have a child? Oh, most insurance companies do not cover childbirth. As bad as hospital childbirthing is, and we'll talk about that more in the future, but it is, it's bad, but they don't even pay for it. You know, and you're coming out of the, the hospital with with a bill for three, four thousand dollars for natural childbirth. If you have a cesarean section, you're going to be paying way more. You know, so this insurance thing, brethren, it's a scam, and it is all designed to make you fear and worry and oh, you know, oh, but I can I can now I can be safe because I have an insurance policy. Well, how about you get an assurance policy and trust the Lord to take care of you? Amen. That's the whole thing. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 16 through 17. 
Proverbs 20, verse 16 says, Take his garment that is surety for a stranger, and take a pledge of him for a strange woman. Bread of deceit is sweet to a man, but afterwards his mouth shall be filled with gravel. <laughs> exactly what we've been talking about. You know, take his garment that is surety for a stranger. Again, you know, all, you know, it's it's kind of funny because it's like you get people and they say they've been ruined by the insurance scam and they say, man, they, they took his shirt. Like renter's insurance? Uh, when I was a single woman, lost and single, I should say, um, many years ago, I had my own apartment in uh, at the edge of Fairfax County, Virginia, right near Falls Church area outside of Washington, D.C. And when I signed up for my lease at the time in... Uh, summer of 2006, I believe it was, uh, my contract literally said, you are required to have renter's insurance. And so I fell victim to that because I had no idea what that entailed. And I called up the insurance company at the time, USAA Federal Savings Bank. I'd been, at the, I'd been with them for many years, many products and services over the years because of my, uh, my military service before that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I called them up and, I'd say, and I said, I'd like to have a renter's insurance policy or set one up. And they said, okay, uh, do you have any uh, valuables in your home? And again, I, out of ignorance, I, I made the mistake of saying, yes, I have a such and such laptop and such and such this and that and this and that, you know, valuables. And they're like, well, what's the approximate value? And I'm like, I have no idea. I, I threw out a number just out of sheer ignorance because I didn't have the receipt of anything on hand. Mm -hmm. And then later on, I'm like, after I got off the phone, I'm like, and even while I was on the phone, I'm like, why do I need to know all this, all this stuff about my, my residence? Because they're keeping you safe. Oh, yes. Yeah. But then, then didn't it, you had like a flood or something like that? Oh, yeah. I was uh, like within hours of, um, of signing my lease and everything within the first two weeks after I had signed my lease for the complex, because I was a bottom unit you know i had this uh walkout balcony that like uh you could literally see the parking lot from the side of my apartment um <clears throat> anyhow i was flooded out the first two weeks that after i'd moved in and i frantically called the management office and i'm like uh you know there's water ruining my my apartment floor and everything and i took pictures of the apartment floor both before the flood and then after the flood as a result and by the time i moved out in 2007 and i showed and i told him you know uh because they walked through my apartment to make sure that you know see what what needed to be remodeled or redone or whatever and they're like why is your floor uh you know looking such and such and i said because um i told him what happened i said i was flooded out i was one of the basement units and i frantically called for help from your office and you're like oh we're busy helping others you know we'll get to you when we can and i waited and waited and waited and waited while working as a defense contractor at the time mm -hmm. and uh i'm like they're not getting to me i had mold growing on my walls especially my bedroom walls and uh, mold isn't exactly healthy for you, if you yep. know what that means. And the renter's insurance did nothing, right? I don't know. Um, I don't know what happened, what made me cancel it, but something happened. I think it was just the fact that uh, between feeling uneasy about having to give an exact account of my valuables and the value of those valuables and the, the stupid lack mm -hmm. of, of support and response from management and my complex after being flooded out and having to put everything in storage tubs and off the floor and everything and uh my cat at the time was weirded out by the flood you yeah. know in the apartment um i s finally said to myself i'm getting rid of the stupid insurance policy i don't need it it's just another expense i don't need mm -hmm. and you know there again we've we've known people that that they have similar situations floods fires whatever and they call the insurance company as i mentioned earlier and it's fighting tooth and nail to get any kind of you know, help. Um, I myself actually, just a real quick story and we'll continue here, but uh, I myself had an ATV at one point in time back when I was in Pennsylvania years and years and years ago, long before I was saved. Yamaha Banshee is what I had and um, I had an insurance policy on the thing and it ended up getting stolen. Uh, I was given a fake, you know, uh, check or whatever, I guess, and, um, and I called the I think it was progressive at the time that I had it with 
And they, you know, man, they was just like pulling teeth trying to get the money from them. And I proved that, you know, it even, the, the fake check even deceived the people at the bank. I mean, it was like a master forgery of this check. And, but the insurance company didn't want to cover it. So again, oh, we have insurance because it's good and we have to have, they're not going to be there for you. Okay, and I'm sure somebody's writing in the comments. I had, you know, I had this bad situation. The insurance company helped me, and yeah, we know all about it. But and let's let's read here Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25 and 26. The fear of man bringeth a snare. Are you snared into your your insurance payments? But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe as long as his insurance policy is up to. No, I'm just kidding. The Lord shall be safe. Many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. Well, we got to seek Obama's favor because of Obamacare and health care and all this other stuff. No, you don't. Does There's, Obama give you your conscience? Who there, gave you your conscience? Right. There are certain things that the government does not have any right to be in. And you as a Christian have a right and a duty to say no. Right, and you say, "Well, I might have to pay a fine then, and I might have to pay a fine for not having health insurance." Good, the Lord will give you the money for it. I mean, if you can't get out of it any other way, and you say, "Well, you know, the Lord's, I'm going to get, you know, fined by the IRS because I don't have health insurance," okay, fine. I mean, if you're out of the system, if you're if you're off the records, you don't have a state marriage license, you don't have your children all registered with the government, and trying to get kickbacks from the IRS for how many children you have, that's a problem. If you're not doing those things. You're going to be off the radar, okay? But if you're going, hey, IRS, give me the money, but I'm also not going to obey you in this other area. Uh-uh. No, it doesn't work that way. Acts chapter 12. They say, what about the New Testament? How about a surety thing here in the New Testament? Acts chapter 12, uh, verse 1. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. Uh-oh, they better have insurance. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and de delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. And Easter is the right translation, by the way. Watch my videos on that. Verse 5. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Praying without ceasing is a good way to... Uh, Get around the fears of not having insurance. Verse 6, And when Herod would have brought him forth, that or the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. Seems like Peter was at peace. He didn't have to have insurance. He had a surety that the Lord was going to take care of him. Verse 7, And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and the, a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side, <laughs> and raised him up. Get up, Peter! <laughs> Saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from, from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. <laughs> you just kind of imagine Peter just like, and the Lord's like, Wham! Hits him. Get up. Huh? What? What's going on? The Lord's like, Boom! Get your clothes. Get your stuff together. Come on. Come on. Okay, Lord's, Lord's like, come on, hurry up, Peter. Come on. I'm trying to break you out of prison here. Verse 9, And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. <laughs> he's thinking he's dreaming. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth into the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. Pretty amazing. Now look at verse 11. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. Have you gotten in that much trouble yet that you are in prison and four quaternions of soldiers to guard you? The Lord broke him out. Do you think the Lord would have broken him out if he had had some kind of a secular insurance policy? No. I can guarantee you he wouldn't have. He'd have said, oh, you have it covered? Okay. Can't help you. 
me show you the best example of this. If you want a, the best book of the Bible to kick insurance, go to the book of Job. That's where we're going to end our study here. Job chapter 1, verses 8 through 12. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is not none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Now, if you're an insurance policy type of Christian, really, you ought to just rewrite this book. You see, because the next number of verses there, Job loses his material possessions. He loses his wealth. He loses his children. But see, if you have an insurance policy, that's a good thing. Because you see, you lose your all your property. Hey, I get a nice big fat check from the insurance company. At the current and, rate of currency valuation. Yeah. Don't get technical on me. <laughs> uh, but, you know, you, you you get this big, nice, fat check in a, you know, inflated currency, I realize. But, uh, you Toilet know. Toilet paper. Yeah. But, you know, and hey, my children died, but I had insurance policies on them too. Hey, man, we're doing good. And guess what happens over in chapter two? The devil gets to mess with Job then. And so Job's health falls apart, but... Again, not a problem because Job has the very best insurance policy. So he goes off to the hospital and they fill him with the vaccinations and the, the, the drip, you know, things and all this stuff. And they give him all the good prescription drugs and he comes out. He's doing great because he's got check after check after check. His health insurance policy has covered everything. Why bother relying on God? Of course, I'm being sarcastic. And what happens at the end of the book of Job? Jump to the end of the book of Job. Chapter 42. Verse 12. Jump down there. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a 1,000 yoke of oxen and a 1,000 she-asses. He had also seven sons and three daughters. And it goes down through there. You mean to tell me God could allow the devil to do bad things to you, but yet you come out better off? Well, that's if you have a surety of the Lord. Blessed assurance. <laughs> if you have that. But if you have an insurance policy with the world, you're on your own. And I can tell you, uh, because again, as a lost woman forced into careerism by my mother, which I've talked about in other studies before, um, I once worked for an entire summer uh, trying to um, finance my college scam education. I worked for a company called Cytel. It is a telemarketing firm. Uh, I don't know too much about it anymore, but I was a inbound and outbound telemarketer who sold insurance. And I'm very familiar with the tactics of insurance salesmen of all different types, whether accidental death and dismemberment, that was our main insurance scam that we promoted mm -hmm. and um you know we're taught in training to to not um when we when we're talking to potential customers as they call it uh we're taught to basically be creative in how we make the sale you know we're taught to not accept no for an answer so if you're told no you keep on cr creating uh inventive ways to make the sale like uh instead of saying insurance uh, some of us, especially me, unfortunately, use the term protection or coverage instead of insurance. Uh, we used clever uh, words to subtly get the point across it's insurance without actually saying it. But yet in training, we were told to uh, just say insurance, keep it at that. But yet uh, when push comes to shove as a telemarketer insurance agent trying to make a sale, you result to a high pressure sales tactics, mm -hmm. which is... Fear. A, Yes, and Fear. psychology, you know, um, the what if start to flow. And um, another yeah. thing that I learned was uh, um, despite however many times people say no, if you can, 
if you're creative enough, you can get them to the point where even after a dozen times of saying no, you say just the right trigger word and they're like, okay, fine, I'll, I'll buy it just to get you off my back. I fell into that too, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, I met my match, you know, one time and I didn't want the stupid accidental death and dismemberment uh, insurance scam, but the the telemarketer was even better than I thought. I under, you know, underestimated the telemarketer sales yeah, pitch they, skills. They can be very, very slimy. Yes. That's why I call them rattlesnakes. And, you know, th again... It is a it is a tactic of Satan that they're using. You say, "Oh, come on, an insurance salesman, Satan." Think about it, brethren. What did the devil say to Eve? Yea, hath God said? He questioned God. You know, and you'll get this thing with people with insurance. I'm going to get it in the comments. It'll be down there for sure. Well, what about this? What about that? What about what if? What if? What if? What if? What if? What if? Based on what? Fear. Yes, and you're using the same tactics I once was trained to do as yeah. an insurance agent. So yeah. don't start saying, What about this? What about that? My insurance company's getting me. Yeah. Because God. I know where your sources come from. I know what your tactics are. I am a veteran of the insurance sector myself. Yeah. So, you know, it just... It, it all goes back to this whole thing. And, you know, and I know there are people out there and they're going to be saying... Well, but, but what about this and what about that? You know, we've gone way too long as Christians and people just are not preaching this. I mean, I can tell you right now in all my years of being saved and listening to preaching and stuff, I never heard insurance policies kicked once. All right. And it's not that, you know, I go, oh, I, I want to kick things that nobody else kicks so I can have a special name or something. No, that's not it. It's just... The body of Christ is going way too far with insurance policies. And it's time we got to go er, and slam on the brakes and say, okay, stop. Stop right now. Well, yeah, but I'm going to get in trouble. The Lord will protect you. And is the your Lord testimony you worth it? Or are you just going to be like the world because, oh, you know, and people won't know the difference. Lost people, when they see a uh, professing Christian, they can tell what the sanctification of that professing Christian is if that person is actually mm -hmm. a King James Bible believing and, Christian. And let me just say this, too, on that note. You know, there's a lot of times that you will actually be able to say no to a government employer or whatever else. And I'll tell you something. I've seen this personally in my own life. I've dealt with people in the military. I've dealt with police officers face-to-face. -face. I've dealt with some people in the government. There will come, you know, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will start saying things and you will have a calmness and a peace. The Lord will protect you in those situations. You know, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in that fire, the Lord was in there with them. You know, Nebuchadnezzar looks in and he's going like this. He's looking into that furnace and he goes, I see one. There's, you know, didn't we put three in there? There's four. And the fourth one is like under the Son of Man, or the Son of God. Excuse me. Yeah. Not a Son of the Gods like the New Versions say. You know, the Son of God. The Lord will be with you during the fire. We read about that it, it there in the book of Acts, in the New Testament, for us as Christians today. And we just read about it here in the book of Job. Job went through that bad situation. Why? So he could get to, get to know God better. Excuse me. You know, that's why the Lord let him go through that. And I'll tell you right now, if you say, boom, I'm dropping the insurance... And all of a sudden something goes wrong with your health or with you lose something through fire or whatever else. And you're just going, that was a major loss. What on earth am I going to do? It's going to be stressful. You know, you think Job had a stressful time there? He had a very stressful time through most of the book of Job. And his friends are coming and giving him all this advice and stuff. And if they would have been insurance, they'd have been probably like, Job, you didn't have insurance. You know, boy, you weren't thinking you're going to get that. When you drop insurance, people are going to be going, you're crazy. You don't have insurance. You're nuts. My you own. And, and what's going to happen is the Lord's going to take you through that time and he's going to provide for you. And it's going to be a testimony to the lost world. So can I say one more story real just quick, to prove your point? We got to. Um, in 2011, after the Lord saved me in October of 2011, the next few months, uh, I was constantly being brainwashed and, and tortured by my father, especially about having insurance, life insurance. And he had taken out a policy from Lincoln Financial Group when I was about six years old. 
but he claims uh, I was a baby at the time. Documents prove otherwise. But the point is, is he told me one day um, around Christmas or right after the new year in 2012, he said, uh, you know, you're old enough now. You need, you should have the policy in your name. I'm going to put it in your name. I'm going to contact Lauren Groney from uh, Tempe, Phoenix, Arizona era, area, and uh, I'm going to put the policy in your name. And he said, I want you to take over paying the payments. And I said, no, I am not keeping it. I said, once once I get the policy in my hands, it is being canceled immediately. Mm-hmm. And he said, but it's my money. I paid for it when you, was, when you were a baby. You know, and I just thought to myself, so that's all I am to you is just a cash cow for life insurance. And uh, there was something, to, something in the paperwork or somehow I heard of, medical exams for this type of life insurance policy and i thought i'm not giving the government goons my blood you know now that i have a say i am not giving them one single piece of of skin or blood or whatever i'm not going through a physical exam and i'm not keeping the policy and i kept on his back for about a month and i kept on on asking him did you contact lauren groney yet did you contact lauren groney yet and finally, sometime in January or February of 2012, he finally emailed Lauren Groney and said, please put the policy to this effect. I don't have the email memorized. Please put the policy in my daughter's name. And, uh, and you know, because when I tried to tell Lauren Groney, hey, uh, my dad wants to put my name on the policy and him taking off the policy, he said, well, I need to hear from, from him first. He needs to send me that email. So he did. And immediately when uh, Lauren Groney contacted me and tried giving me all these sales pitches, you know, oh, you need to keep the policy. It'll protect you in the case of a health problem Mm -hmm. or whatever. And, you know, send me these documents with all the propaganda. I just flat out told him, you know, with scripture, I said, first and foremost, you're not getting any of my blood. I am not giving you any single thing about me. I'm not going through a physical exam. I want the policy gone. And I quoted some scripture. I forget what it was. Um, but, you know, and he like, he acted like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, he's a lost insurance agent to begin with. But he was giving me, you know, all this propaganda of, oh, you need to have it. You need to, you need to keep this policy. It's done really well for you over X number of years. You know, it's now worth such and such. And it's I'm like, really done well for them is what he was really yeah. doing. And of course, for my dad who took it out on me just to uh, profit off of my existence and potential death. And I, and I said, another email, I said, cancel my policy immediately. I am not mm-hmm. keeping it. I don't care what you say. And I tried to give him some more scripture. And uh, finally, when he sent me the documents in the mail, and I signed according to where he said, okay, sign here and sign here to cancel it. And I answered the questions to, my, to the best of my ability and knowledge at the time with what I knew of the insurance industry. Mm-hmm. And I sent back the, the documentations. I have them on record saved, as a matter of fact, copies of them. I uh, sent a gospel tract to him. So he's aware, he's accountable to God now for his actions mm-hmm. from that day and, forth. You know, and that's that's a very important point with this whole thing. When you're getting out of this thing, keep the Lord in it. You know, um, when, you, when you're, when if the Lord's convicting you on this, and I do pray he is, and you're going to try to get out of the state marriage license thing, you're going to try to get out of uh, all the insurance stuff and everything else, give the Lord credit. Amen. You know, again, I heard a story of, this is kind of not related to the insurance thing, but I heard a story of a guy that was in trouble with the law, had embezzled a lot of money and things, and he got saved. I think it was D.L. Moody knew this guy. And the guy came to Moody and he said, I'm a Christian now. And he said, I'm, I'm a criminal. And he said, if I go to the law about this, he said, I'm going to go to jail. And it was like, Moody said, well, you're going to have to go to the law. And he said, just be honest about it. And this guy went to the law and he said, my name is such and such and, you know, I've embezzled so much and here's the this and that. He gave all the details, just turned himself into the law and they could have, I mean, they should have put the guy away for life and he got a much, much more reduced sentence. And I've heard of, you know, David Spurgeon, uh, again, you know, he got saved when he was in federal prison on firearms and drug charges and second in command of the outlaws motorcycle gang if you don't know who he is and uh he went to the judge and he said 
And the judge was like, you know, tell me why I shouldn't put you away for life. And he said, because I'm a Christian now. And he said, if you let me out, I'm going to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm a new creature. I'll never go back to my old life. And that judge said, innocent, boom, get out of my courtroom. If you ever show up, I'm going to throw the books at you. God can do amazing things when you have him as your surety and not a secular insurance policy. I, we are living proof. You know, and I want to say this too, and we're going to be talking more about some of the things that we experiment with. The Christian life is a life of experimentation, faith-based experimentation, where you say, okay, Lord, your word says this. I'm going to trust your word. I'm going to let you be our surety and just say, okay, Lord, you take care of our health. You take care of our home. You take care of whatever. See, put your faith in the Lord. He will not let you down. So that's going to be it. Uh, like I said, there's going to be some very interesting stuff coming out in the future. Not going to give away any more hints. I'll just let you wonder about the things. You know, if you know anything about this ministry, you know that there are some weird things and interesting things that we come out with. So <laughs> that's going to be it. Thank you for your prayers, and we will see you in the next video.